It's spoiler in time, my friends. This is the show where we take all the hard work from Cord Killers and figure out what shows to watch and talk about them and spoil what we thought about them. So if you haven't watched them and you don't want to know, well, you might want to stop right now. I'm Tom Merritt. He's Brian Brushwood. Yeah, most importantly, uh, you know, I, I had an epiphany that what's mm. so hard about doing production? Uh, we'll find out in this episode of Spoiler in Time. <laughs> yes, if you uh, if you are in the habit of, of watching or listening to Cord Killers and immediately going into Spoiler in Time, you may wonder, like, wait, wait Tom wasn't on Cord Killers. Uh, we we are watching. We are doing Spoiler in Time a day late. Uh, not just so I could be on it, but because uh, we we had some other stuff going on. Uh, but it gives us a chance to really talk over all of these shows, including the finale of Picard, Season 3, Episode 10, Ted Lasso, Season 3, Episode 6, and Succession, Season 4, Episode 5. Uh, Brian, shall we start with Succession? Uh, yes, we... Uh, you know what? Yeah, let, let's just talk about Succession. <laughs> The, the other part of this is that Bryce is in here, so Brian is running all of the buttons. Poorly. <laughs> we, we could start somewhere else if you want. No, 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 no. Uh, wherever you want. <laughs> Take the lead, my friend. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's talk about Succession, Season 4, Episode 5. Uh, I felt that the marriage of writing and acting, uh, or execution on that writing was the highlight of this episode for me the the subtle passive aggressiveness the the ballet dance of words that everyone was using to pretend like they're having a a you know level-headed financial negotiation uh while pursuing their own emotional things i, I it really stood out to me as well done they they did a pretty good fake out where you know they one thing Succession is good about is stripping away everything that is in the weeds and only giving you the core story up to and including the very, I think, fairly clumsily handled drawing on a piece of paper, one, four, four, that's our number to win or whatever. And as a result, as a viewer, even though we don't know any of the details of stuff, uh, uh, we know that one four four billion dollars is what they want. We know that um, the 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 Fox News analog is off limits, and the first thing the guy does is offer one eight four. But also, I want the Fox News analog, and so it's just complicated enough that we all follow it. We understand that there are gray beards and all that stuff. Um, I like how subtle, first of all, there's very little subtle in succession, mm. but I like how understated in succession it was that uh, Shiv, number one, feels marginalized, feels pushed to the outside, and that would make sense that she would essentially become an agent for, uh, is it Gojo, the the company or, yeah, or whatever yeah. the guy? Uh, for Starsguard's company, yeah. Right, exactly. So by the end, he's saying things like, send me pictures pictures of their faces and all that stuff. And she willingly complies, uh, even though uh, it's it's curious because they're being overpaid to an astonishing amount, but they have to bury their dad's legacy. They have to chop up their dad for parts. And there's this back and forth push pull of, I mean, we all know they're terrible people, but are they this terrible question mark? Well, I, I I found it so, so there's the little things where you you hear people saying things that on paper uh, are entirely inoffensive and when they say them their body language their tone turns them into weapons that's so fun about this now you take that tool and you put it in into all of those situations that you just described uh and it just becomes a delicious cake of you know, this this sort of uh, we don't need Shiv to tell us that she's feeling left out. Uh, we don't need Shiv to even uh, tell the brothers that she's feeling left out because she's just going to take matters into her own hands. And it set up this lovely thing going back to that 144 number where you hear the graybeards say, uh, well, you know, sometimes if you're not prepared for hardballs, uh, you, you'll 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 you, you you may you may run into problems. You know, it's not always that simple. 
and and you hear Kendall like, nope, it's one four four. And if it's not one four four, then then we're going to be disappointed. And like you said, he goes in and he gets well above one four four. The Greybeards are ecstatic. They're like, hey, we won. This is great. Uh, and Kendall doesn't follow his own advice. It's like, oh, but but I I want to win this battle of wills with Alexander Skarsgård. I, I I don't want to just be above one four four. I want to bend him to my will. Uh, you have Roman, who we've been building up as being more emotionally upset uh, about losing his dad emotionally tied to atn because that was his dad's baby uh and then you have you, you as we meant just mentioned you, you have shiv shiving them <laughs> well and and there is that wonderful moment where um uh shiv's you know possible new boyfriend says send me pictures of their faces um uh and at first you know we see a picture of of kendall and 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 uh uh, uh roman but but then there's that implication that no 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 those aren't the faces that i want to see because all of the gray beards get eviscerated they're all on the kill list they're all getting fired and getting mm -hmm. told to gtfo um yeah. uh, with the exception of tom and greg which is interesting yeah well it the implication again there's so much so much unsaid in this episode the implication is that shiv protected tom uh, you know, because be, well, I guess it wasn't even implied. She even said something about him. Well, and, uh, and, and also we have a very clear overture from Shiv, you know, asking Tom out to dinner. Like Shiv sees, yeah, like, she, she, she mentions sees that she's Tom, being pushed away and she realizes, oh my gosh, if I reconcile with Tom, then we'll be unstoppable because Kendall is a mess up. Roman is a mess mm -hmm, up. If yeah. I'm, if, if I'm the one in a healthy relationship, and, and and Tom is the Machiavellian prince that he seems to be. Yeah. Th then we win everything. I, I I hadn't thought about it till now, but there it wasn't there a line where she's kind of making fun at, of him for being like, oh well, yes. you'll just kind of throw yourself in front of whoever has power. Uh, and I hadn't thought about like, oh that that's when the light bulb goes on in Shiv's head, right? It's like ah, he could throw himself in front of me. In fact, I have more ways of manipulating him than most to bend him to my will and make him useful. I I I don't know and 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 i mean le legitimately i don't know mm -hmm. whether or not she's playing tom as a pawn or recognizes that tom has despite being cast out continued to make himself very very powerful and versatile as a weapon and yeah. and this may be a true a true rejoining a, a, a true wedding i like, think both of those things can be true too yeah like it could be a little of both yeah uh, uh, although, I, I don't know either. You know, th there was some snarky like, uh, well, he's got broad shoulders. I used to think you had broad shoulders, but you look weak and wilty or whatever. Yeah, maybe, is that just another way of like controlling him? You or, know? or or maybe in a weird way, an invitation to, yeah. what if you weren't weak and wilty? What if, Show what me if your high, high, make your shoulders a little broader, why don't you? I mean, at this Although point- Although I wasn't, I, di I didn't think she was talking about shoulders, to be honest. Oh, I mean, whatever it is. <laughs> of course. Yes, yeah. uh, 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 the, there's some kind of gamesmanship and that's the beauty of the show is you don't know how much of it we're even meant to understand how much of it is inside jokes and we're just on the outside. Um, I will say production value, uh, hey man, uh, it was nice to be in a place that wasn't a beach environment. Uh, I rather enjoyed just seeing, you know, hanging out on cliffs and fjords and seeing God. I know you don't always watch the, uh, the, the post interview, the post show interviews where they, they talk to the cast. Did you watch this one? Not in this one. Yeah. So they talked to Karen Culkin uh, and he said he was so being Roman and 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 psyching himself up to be have that emotional speech uh, to Alexander, what oh, Lucas to, to Lucas to Matson. He was he's psyching himself up that he didn't look around. And so they got back down the mountain from having that that big blow up where he he rips Matson apart and everyone's talking about how beautiful it was. And he's like, oh, really? So he went back up when he, when, he, when he wasn't acting so he could actually look around uh, and appreciate it. Well, and, and uh, this is a case of succession has pulled off something very, very clever, which is it's clear that it looks like uh, uh, Team Roy won 
but also it's clear that they didn't win and no. I don't know how or why. I don't know what the poison yeah. pill is. Like I well, know there's so I, many I know levels, they're right? I know they're screwed, but I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. Well, cuz on on the very basic level, they're screwed in that he was making them an offer they literally cannot legally refuse, right? That would it would be malfeasance with the board at that point. For them to uh, not accept it, yeah. Exactly. So he makes such a big offer based on Shiv like give him more money and they'll be, you know, they won't be able to turn it away. Uh they 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 f themselves that way. But I think you're right. I I think it, it's that is not the only bomb that's going to go off. Yeah, it was basically a uh, press release for surprise incoming one, two, three episodes. <laughs> who knows? Yeah, and then you have the whole thing with um, their well, who is the press relations person, a a Abby or? Um, the, oh, the uh, the the weird thing. Oh, okay. They, they did when she, the one that Shiv says, "Don't fire her. She's got too much on you." <laughs> uh, by too much, she means too much of your literal blood <laughs> like i don't literal i don't, I don't know when blood. you decided to start sending her dna by the leader but <laughs> ebba ebba is her name yeah yeah uh that that's a wild outside vector that uh i mean clearly that we're not could meant just to be know meant the whole to, story well it could just be meant to show matt how unhinged and manipulable matson is right which, which maybe think, shiv picked up on which is yes. why she's playing his game for now that would be enough but the fact that they made a point of keeping carolina who is uh, the equivalent of ebba uh you know what so much Royco. the equivalent that i was a little bit confused is that the same person question carolina <laughs> is is the one from waystar royco right uh ebba is the uh scandinavian but, but version it is of it is not an accident that the two of them yep. have the same hair color the same haircut uh -huh, the same uh -huh. frame the same so i'm pretty sure tone. that's gonna that's gonna come down to something. yeah yeah uh wow yeah no it was a solid solid episode um so solid is a good way to put it where it's like i you know I, I didn't know how much i wanted out of it uh i saw a couple of headlines saying this is why everybody hates greg but i didn't see anything more greg than usual from i mean greg. it was pretty it was an awkward scene yeah. and i think he's he, <laughs> greg is the the peter principal embodied so he he fails upward uh and he's the only mistake he might be making is turning away from Tom to Kendall at a point when Tom might be on the ascendancy. Uh, but it's knowing Greg very easy for him to turn away from Kendall right back to Tom. Like that, that's just what he does. Uh, one last thing they did imply that, uh, who boy did Connor mess something up with Logan Roy's funeral. And I suspect we'll find out exactly yeah. what next. I can't episode. tell if that's just comic relief of putting Logan in a kilt, uh, or, or if it's going to be worse. I mean, I, uh, well, they, they teed it up and <laughs> yeah, uh, Connor yeah. said, I'm going to need, you know, full permission to do whatever I want. And then uh -huh. it's very clear when Roman sees the messages that he's like, you know, very upset. But but again, they do that wonderful trick of of like this is the worst thing ever. It's fine, it's fine, you know. And, yeah. and it's like yeah. you don't know which of those two things to believe. Right? Is he just upset because it's pictures of his dead dad? Right? Or I, I, is I'm, it... I'm gonna bet that there's an upskirt photo. Yeah. Of yeah. of a deceased yeah. Logan Roy. Mm -hmm. Uh well, that's a good image to leave everyone <laughs> with, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> Any other thoughts on succession? No, we say, okay. uh, I, I, I mean, again, how, how do we come down from the power of, of the uh, Logan Roy dying episode? Uh, mm. We'll see. All right. That is succession season four, episode five. Let's talk Ted Lasso season three, episode six. I kind of felt like this episode was the equivalent of last year's uh, episode where they they had the big night out and it was all trippy and full of film references, but this one was more grounded. This one had a had a a more co comprehensible storyline uh, than that one, but it but it was the same idea, which is like, okay, you've got time off. What do you do with it? Well, and on top of that, this was the let's purge ourselves of uh, totemism. Let's purge ourselves of guruism. Let's purge ourselves of the belief that Azava is going to save us or any of that stuff. Let's remind ourselves that we're a team. We see a substantial resolution between uh, Jamie and Roy in an adorable way where yeah, they literally learn nice to ride bike bikes ride. together. Um, we... Um, 
I'm not entirely sure that the story is better for the fake out on Ted Lasso being high on hallucinogenics, you know, uh, and I, I would understand from a production standpoint, why you would, why you would write that in like, uh, Oh no, he just had a natural epiphany or whatever. Uh, uh because there's going to be some people who are turned off to the idea that it takes, uh, thought enhancing drugs in order to have an epiphany. I don't or get whatever. the idea that Ted Lasso cares that people might be upset that it takes thought enhancing drugs. Uh, I, I, it doesn't feel very high on the list of things they would be worried about. So I took that to mean we want to show that Ted actually does understand uh, soccer, and and so we we want it to be clear that this this was coming out of you know, unassisted from his brain, not, not a moral thing, I guess. Yeah. I, I, I guess uh, my uh, specific question is like that moment when they're all like, Oh, by the way, you were never doing mushrooms. Like why add that? What does that buy you? To, to show that like, no, Ted, you, you did this on your own, right? Cause they have coach to, beard to make stoned out of his mind all the time. Okay. So it's to be, it's to build the character of Ted of like, Ted, you need to learn to trust yourself. You're, you're better at this than you think. Yeah. Um, it was a, fairly extreme version of that kind of story. Uh, in fact, I needed to look up whether or not the narrator was the same guy who did the Stanley parable. Uh, but, uh, uh, the thing I loved the most about it is that it, it looked an awful lot like Ed, uh, Ted was having a epiphany and I was like, man, I'd be really disappointed if they portrayed him as being the first person to figure something out. But sure enough, he goes back and he describes what he saw and coach beard is like, Oh yeah, so total uh, total football by this guy. He was yeah, like, is from that the what 70s. That's called? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> great. <laughs> like like uh, that was a good way to balance it. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, also, I I kind of loved the agonizing possibility of what appeared to be an equally healthy, awesome individual taking care of Rebecca, mm. and and even a little bit of a fake out of looking like they were doing a hookup, but it turns out it's just a good foot rub. And like, I felt that pause and uh, for context, like I'm watching all of these with my 15 year old daughters and uh, uh, daughter. And I'm like, yeah, sometimes you encounter somebody when you're single and it occurs to you that this could be somebody that you could connect with for a very long time, but it's just not the right time for either of you. Mm -hmm. And then they, never show up again and that happens and and that's very that's very weird as as i cross 25 years of marriage and as she is just now entering you know adolescence mm -hmm. and so on yeah but but i do like the fact that yeah there are wholesome moments like this where both parties can agree uh maybe in another life question mark what did you think of Rebecca saying, did we, he telling her, no, we didn't. And then she walks out the door and he goes, oh yes, we did. Uh, I took that to be, did we on the base level, did we have sex? And I didn't remember it. And then when he said, oh yes, we did, uh, speaking on a meta level, Yes, we did have a very serious connection. <laughs> no, that's not how I took it at all. That's oh, really? Yeah. No, I took it as he was wanting to spare her feelings, knowing that they probably never see each other again. Uh, and so he didn't want her out there regretting that or thinking about it or feeling like she should be forced to come back. And so he said no, which she was immediately relieved uh, when, in fact, that was not the true answer. Oh, interesting cord killers at gmail.com yeah, yeah. because i i read that as he was a gentleman it did not go anywhere uh but but if he implied that it did he was implying uh yes we had a very for reals emotionally connective moment yeah i like your interpretation better uh, I want yours to be true because I get very conflicted very quickly with Court, my interpretation. at gmail.com. Uh, I also really enjoyed uh, the entire team demonstrating why they're losing uh, by not being able to pick a place to go. Well, and uh, look, a, a pillow fight was a fairly cheap way to resolve everything. Oh, sure. yeah, but yeah. whatever, they they engaged in a team building activity that I I assume that this is going to set up Jamie Tart 
to step up and be the leader, the person who can make the decisions. Had he been there, they would have all picked a direction and gone there. Be- Which, and that, okay, yeah. For the record, uh, boy, oh boy, season one, if you told me that Jamie Tart would be not just one of my favorite characters, but the one I respected the most... <laughs> I would not have seen that coming. <laughs> yeah. I think we do have a really interesting, they kind of took Keeley out of the picture here and sent her off to Norway, uh, which is fine. Uh, it would have been too much to try to to juggle that one in here too. Uh, but I think we are headed for a love parallelogram uh, for Keeley between Roy and Jack and Jamie. Like well, I think it, Jamie's it, going to be part of that conversation too. Uh, uh, keep in mind that Roy has never disclosed why they actually separated and why he was the one to cut it off. So, so that that will inform where things go from here. So, I if I was going to place a bet, I would place it on Roy and Keeley end up together. Uh, mm-hmm. Jamie becomes self actualized. Oh Jack, sure, yeah. Jack is a I fun agree. fling. And but I think Jamie will there there will be a moment where Keeley thinks, well, Jamie's changed. The reasons that I ditched him for Roy are no longer there. So I think that's that's it's going to be a thing she's going to have to confront. Right. That's but all, but also, I, I think Roy has changed, too. He's not willing to admit it. And I, yeah, I, yeah. If, 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 if we're placing a 50 50 bet, I'll say it's Keeley and Roy by the end. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd be with you. Uh, and then I guess the other one we want to mention is Colin and Trent Krim. Trent Krim, uh, we were worried, like, might feel the need to report the story, but instead Trent Krim... Turns uh, out to have lived that experience. Yeah, which, respected Colin and was like, no, I, let, let me help you through this. Which, uh, uh, number one, uh, there's part of me, I swear, I, I blurted out, I'm like, no wonder Trent's so fabulous. <laughs> like, I was actually <laughs> angry. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 then of co- and of course he's cool as hell and of course he's helping him out um although it it is a bit wild that we live in a world and this is something i'm thankful for where uh the uh, you have to be reminded that there are people who have reasons to stay in the closet on this kind yeah of thing. yeah um that is, that that is, this is a good reminder of that you're right uh i think we covered all the important events and storylines anything else you want to mention uh nothing outside of uh season three definitely more fun they came back with the vengeance with season three now my biggest question that i want to speculate on is uh, in theory it should be three seasons and done but Mm -hmm. i mean apple tv has to be very very pleased with how things are going sure and a check could be written large enough that maybe season three is not the end. Uh, I, 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 my default hypothesis is that they keep to the word. It's three seasons, one, two, three, and we're done. But this show is so good. I, I don't know if I want more or if I deserve more or if I'm going to get more, but I'm increasingly starting to think about what a uh, season four would look like. I don't think they will do a season four of Ted Lasso. There it is. There it is. But the characters, situations, the environments, and right. maybe even a cameo from Ted Lasso himself right. might show. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now we're on the same page. Yeah. 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 All right. There you go. That's season three, episode six of Ted Lasso. Let's talk about the season finale, the series finale of Star Trek The Next Generation. I'm sorry, I meant Picard, season eight, uh, episode, I mean, season three, episode 10, uh, where in uh, the crew comes together on the Enterprise D and uh, saves the world. This, this was filled with fan service uh, because it starts off with Walter Koenig voicing the relative of Pavel Chekhov, uh, who is named Anton, uh, which one assumes is after uh, the dear departed Anton Yelchin, who played Chekhov in the Chris Pine Kirk versions of Star Trek. So you start off right there. You start off with that, uh, which kind of sets the tone. And you get a uh, best of both worlds level Borg adventure uh, with a new style Borg, the Alice Krieg Borg Queen, uh, now decrepit, uh, having been having been suffering from a virus that was implanted in her by the Federation, um, and and, uh, and and so you you have to save Jack and save Earth. Yeah, um, you 
you you can only be shocked and surprised once. I'm thankful for this last episode for following through on all the promises that were made last episode. Last episode was a wonderful, wonderful surprise. And I'm, I'm going to make a very, very clumsy parallel here. Uh, Tom, uh, I, I don't know if you ever experienced uh, Star Trek, the experience in Las I Vegas. I did. I did. Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I got a chance to, to do that. I've always wondered if one of those Klingons was a person I would go on to meet later in life, but I, I'll never know. Uh, Tom, what was, and I already know the answer, what was the best part of that theme park ride? The best part for me was being in the shuttle and feeling like you're actually flying through space, then getting out and walking onto the bridge of the Enterprise D. Uh, okay, that's not what happened. What happened was, is you queued up for the ride and everything was a very boring, very boilerplate, if you're pregnant, please go away, cheesy yeah. video. And then you were transported to the transporter room mm -hmm. in the single most magical experience I've had in my entire life. I was so thrilled with that surprise that I, yeah, whatever. We got on a shuttle. We, we saved uh, uh, Picard's ancestors or whatever. But I always remember that, that, that powerful, powerful surprise of being transported onto the Enterprise. <laughs> That's hilarious because I'd forgotten that part. Oh, war? Like, I yes. still don't know how they did it. I've, I've, I've heard the, the part I remember is being in the shuttle and being like, I feel like I'm flying through space. This is amazing. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, it, 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 uh, that's very interesting for, yeah, me, yeah, yeah. for me that, that, oh my God, I've just been transported on the enterprise and I don't know how it happened because the, the experience for anybody who hasn't done it, uh, like you look down and you're looking at concrete, you look and there's monitors and stuff. Uh, lights flicker and flash and then uh, and you feel a whoosh and uh, cold air blasts in your face. You hear the transporter sound and then suddenly the lights that were concrete underneath you are now glowing transporter pads and uh, somebody, you know, paid minimum wage says, we've got them, sir. And then Picard's <laughs> voice says, good, bring them to the bridge. Uh, like everything after that was just gravy like that uh -huh, that alone uh -huh. was the whole ride that's hilarious that's kind of how i feel right now where it's like last episode just yes i get where you're going with okay this. yes last episode was that that did not see this coming what a treat what a delight what a surprise everything this episode was gravy maybe gravy that 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 really soaked in the moment uh quite a bit but 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 <laughs> earned gravy earned gravy. gravy yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, a thick gravy that may not be good for your heart, but you're you're like, you know what? Uh, a lot of preparation went into this gravy. It was victory love... gravy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, I I agree with you. I I definitely feel like this is the payoff to the surprise, right? I'm like, okay, you surprised me. Now do something with it, and I feel like they did something with it. And I, this was movie level plot, uh, at least, and and I was I was here for it. I enjoyed I enjoyed the finish. And I'm glad that it was surprise and payoff. I'm glad it wasn't surprise and then four more episodes. So I'm, I'm, I'm appreciative of that. There is a strong effort to keep everything thematically going, but but much like the next gen generation, like really make an effort to resolve everything procedurally. Like, hey, man, we got one hour. Mm -hmm. like, we're we're going to at least tie this part into a bow by the end of it. Um, uh, I also noticed, and so this makes me wonder if it was just an acting choice on Patrick Stewart's part. As soon as, because he knew this was coming. They all knew this was coming. As soon as he's on the bridge of the Enterprise D, his back straightens up, his voice gets a little confidence, and he's in command I in mean, a way that we have not seen him this entire run. I actually wonder if it maybe goes a little bit deeper than that, because mm. uh, there's a cadence and a rhythm when I'm doing, and I know I'm doing a classic scam school shoot or sure. a lecture that I've done a whole bunch of times or whatever. Uh -huh. Like I become eight years younger than I am in that moment. And it, it uh, if it was an intentional acting affectation, kudos to him, but I suspect it's something more primal. I su suspect it's like, yes, I've done this for 20 years. What's up, you know? Yeah, there's some state dependent memory kicking in, right? Right. Yeah, I could, I could see that for sure. Um, it, it it could it it could be both on both ends, right? 
it could be a choice to be like, well, Picard's old and he's not in charge, so I'm gonna I'm gonna play him with some vulnerability that he didn't have in his younger years because I am that age and I understand that even I have that. And then maybe by plan or not plan, he gets on the bridge of the Enterprise D and that that effect kicks in. There, there was a playful moment where Seven of Nine is granted a uh, captainship of of one of the ships or. Uh, wasn't the Titan. It couldn't have been the Titan because they It is the Titan, but they have rechristened the Titan to be the Enterprise G. Right. But the Enterprise G is crewed by our fabulous old people, right? The Enterprise D is the old. It's cast. still there. Got it. Okay. So they Because they, Jordy got it. put it back together. Got it. It was okay. his so long there's two, project. There's two enterprises. Okay. So there's the Enterprise D. The E was destroyed at the end of Insurrection. Yeah. The F was destroyed earlier this season when Admiral Shelby was captain in it. And the G is the Titan rechristened. I mean, fi- okay, look, the important thing is all our favorite characters are in the G spot. And then we get to the part <laughs> where Seven of Nine is said, it's spelled out like, oh, what's your clever phrase to go? And then they hide that from us. Uh, is that something that's going to pay off? Or I thought I saw something on social media of like various things that she said, like make ship go now or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, make ship go now is what Spock says in the trailer for next year's strange new or for the upcoming that's what strange I'm thinking new world. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. We talked about that on cord killers yeah, last yeah. night. Yeah. Uh, I, I read an article, uh, that said the scene with seven of nine as the captain that you're talking about with Rafi as the first officer with Jack Crusher as the ship's counselor, but counselor in a different sense than Deanna Troy was, uh, is meant to imply that the enterprise goes on to new adventures with a new crew that you've come to know and love with an opportunity to do a spinoff that there is no end of conversations with Alan Kurtzman about how fun that would be, but absolutely no plans or sign offs or details. So that, that could end up just being a fun, like, well, isn't it fun to imagine? And I'm sure they're going to write paperback books, uh, that, that tell those adventures. Right. Um, it could, depending on a million different variables, turn into a spinoff series that, uh, I think Jerry Ryan would, would be great in. She, uh, she, she would be great. Yeah. Uh, also, um, uh, hopefully, hopefully nobody got annoyed. Like, uh, I, I did note and think it was playful to have an exact one for one immersion or, uh, inversion on gender, uh, uh, where, whereas like, you know, you go back uh, to 1987 and, uh, uh, counselor Troy is the one female on the bridge and she, her job is to be counselor. Everybody else is a dude or a robot or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And now we have kind of a perfect inversion of that, which, um, uh, I hope nobody complains like something, something woke agenda or whatever, because it's like, no, it's, it's fine symmetry for storytelling and, and we'll see how long that it even lasts like this. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I I think that it is irrelevant uh, <laughs> to, to to quote Seven's old people, the Borg. Uh, it is futile to to think about that. <laughs> uh, I I I love. Ca- is she Captain Seven? That's the other part that I wonder. They didn't they didn't play with that, but you know she's very insistent through this entire series. Don't call me Hanson. Don't call me Annika. I'm Seven of Nine. That's who I think of myself as. It's important to I, me. I, w- I would imagine that um, there'll be Is some she Captain kind of... Nine or Captain Seven. That's where that's what I need. Right. Know. There'll be there'll be uh, some. Uh, yeah. You you know what? I, I I think it's within the captain's discretion to say, uh, call me Captain Tom or yeah. You know what? <laughs> yeah. On this ship, I'm Captain Brian. Got it. Okay, Maybe just cool. Captain. I could see that. Right. And, and they'll probably stick like... to that for a while. But but there mm-hmm. may be some brief moment where they where they touch mm-hmm. on that. It'd be a fun little thing. They they played with that with Kate Mulgrew's character in the early seasons of Voyager about whether you should call her sir or ma'am. Yeah. And she's like, call me sir. Ma'am sounds weird. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we got two Tuvok made another cameo. We got another uh, cameo. Okay. Oh, Tuvok. Yeah, uh, Tuvok showed up only to say, by the way, Tuvok, I, uh, 
Hello, nerds. It's us. P a press release from the future. <laughs> yes, we know that canonically changelings kill whoever they adopt, but not but this time. This time, they Tubak didn't. is alive. You're welcome. <laughs> Goodbye. Tim Woo. Russ would like to guest star in any potential <laughs> yes, spinoffs. Exactly. So, Tubak is alive. Uh, also, uh, also uh, uh, Data is a is chill person going to therapy. Um, it, it, oh yeah, it's, yeah, it's, that was interesting. It's so great because he's wanted to be a real, you know, the literal mm -hmm. stated plot is Pinocchio. He wants to be a real boy, and now he really is. And now, now he is. he's now wrestling with a new set of complications, which is something we're all wrestling with: what it's like to be an actual human. Yeah, uh, I love the bit where he's like, "I saw a crew crew person with a cat, and I broke down in tears," which is just a great like. If you don't know, it's like, "Oh, okay, so he's having emotions." And if you do know, he's like, "Oh yeah, the cat was incredibly important to Data, and yet he couldn't ever wrap his head around why when before he had emotions." So. Uh, also, favorite part was the moment Data gets up and turns his back to Counselor Troy. Just a little bit of an eye roll. <laughs> Like, which I assume all <laughs> therapists do. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Uh, this season was so fun. I don't pretend that it is the best example of Star Trek. I don't pretend that it is perfect. But I will say it is exactly the right way to wrap up what otherwise was a very unsatisfying wrap up to the TNG crew. And I think I think we're done here with that and not that they can't do cameos here and there of course they can but we i don't feel like i need to see these folks come together again this this has an undiscovered country feel to it which was the intention of this season apparently yeah uh and for anybody who's picard curious just uh maybe skip the whole first two seasons just watch the i i don't think you would lose anything by watching the third season first and then going back and finding and out what them else like, there was oh, there. Oh, I want to find out more about yeah, how we got like, there. Like, yeah. why are they talking like Picard replaced his body? Well, yeah, because he did. Yeah, yeah. If you want to well, spend a whole season you, to find Season out two how. tells you the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or wait, was it season one? one? Yeah, one. Yeah, two, one. Uh, two, two was when they were riffing on the time travel mm -hmm. stuff. And two, two was their voyage home. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, that is Picard season three, episode 10. Uh, so we have no more Picard. What are we going to do next week? Well, we've got Ted Lasso season three, episode seven. We've got succession season four, episode six. Uh, and we are going to start watching silo on Apple TV plus in two weeks. So in the intervening weeks, Miami vice fans, uh, we, we are going to get back on the rewatch for one week. Uh, child's play starring Ving Rhames season four, episode five of Miami vice. Can't wait. It's going to be great. Uh, thanks, everybody, for supporting us at patreon.com slash cord killers. Uh, you make the show possible. You get these shows a little bit earlier, uh, especially when we do them on time. But even when we don't do them on time, you get them uh, earlier than the rest of the folks. Uh, and you get all kinds of things like after talk and stuff as well. So thanks for supporting us. We will spoil you again next time. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>